Let's Talk Supply Chain. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Let's Talk Supply Chain. Well, you asked, and we are delivering with another brand new mini series. And who are we featuring? They're the logistics experts, tech innovators, and a firm Let's Talk Supply Chain favorite. It's Sifted. We wrapped up our Tomorrow's Insights delivered today mini series with Sifted back in September, and it was a real success. I got to talk to some new faces and old friends and start to really get under the skin of who Sifted are and what they do. So over the course of our new Driving Your Parcel Performance series, we're going to dive even deeper. This time, we'll be putting the spotlight onto their carrier management suite and taking a closer look at how it can help you take a proactive approach to contract management. From ensuring compliance and negotiating rates to controlling spend and improving relationships. Today, in episode one, Contract Monitoring, I'm joined by Jeremy Lee, VP of Business Solutions at Sifted, to take a closer look at Sifted's contract monitoring solution, how it works, avoiding surprise costs, switching from a reactive to a proactive approach, and exactly how Sifted are helping to drive success for shippers everywhere. So welcome to the show, Jeremy. Hey, Sarah. It's great to be here. Thanks for having us. It's great to welcome a new face to the show. Our last mini series was so fascinating. I mean, I learned a lot and I know the audience were really intrigued by everything the team shared with us. So really looking to find out even more. And so let's just dive right in. So this mini series is all about Sifted's carrier management suite. And this is a brand new product, right? It is. It's not just a brand new product for us, but it's brand new for the industry. It's really never been done before. Uh, and what we really wanted to do was, you know, bring the industry up into the you know, 21st century at this point in time with data management tech that other industries have been using for you know several years at this point in time. Uh, we're talking about a 20 year old service industry uh, that we really want to bring a new SaaS product to. Uh, it was a massive development effort from our product team. We're talking millions, millions of data points that we had to program into our software. Wow. Overall development's been su extremely successful. Uh, we started with uh, you know, a customer feedback panel where we brought the ideas to our actual clients right there. And we really wanted to hear what they had to say about it. Mm -hmm. uh, and the overall overwhelming feedback was just super positive. So we took that, we ran with it, and then we ran into beta testing. And we had a couple dozen beta testing clients. And again, the feedback was just overwhelmingly positive. So, uh, you know, we kept putting those feedback into the, uh, the continued adjustments that we made. And we're at version two right now, which we're going to be releasing this week. Uh, everyone's super excited about it. Uh, for what it was designed for, it's about managing that total contract. Uh, so there are other aspects to the suite, like the contract repository uh, to protect against turnover changes as well. And that is super exciting. So we are literally launching this in the market together with this episode. So talk That's to right. us through the, the development of the suite, right? Why was it a product you were keen to build? Like what has the de development kind of looked like over the, the course of the last year? And what was it designed to do? So I know you talked about, you know, getting customer feedback and beta testing and now being in version two. Um, but give us a little bit more of insights as to why and what, and then really some of that feedback that you've been getting. So what we were, a lot of what we've built into this software, are things that we've been doing, uh, you know, piecewise for over a decade with our mm -hmm. clients. And so what we really wanted to do was take all of the power that we've had here at Sifted for, you know, our entire time in existence and put it into the hands of the clients. Uh, so that takes, you know, simulation engines and, you know, mass computing power and trying to make it into a user friendly module uh, to where clients can actually have this at their fingertips and at a glance understand, you know, how their their contract is performing, how their business is performing as a whole, that everything is running to the T's and C's that they expect. Uh, and that way they keep focusing on what they do best, which is run their business. Absolutely. That's what I love to hear, right? You know, a lot of people get into different things for their business because they want to control it. But a lot of times you need to look at outsourcing and external organizations to really help you so that you can run 
your business and the core part of your business, right? So today's episode is all about contract monitoring. So before we dive in, can you just explain, you know, what does contract monitoring actually mean and what does it typically involve just for anyone that might not be too sure on all the different uh, terminology? Sure. Contract monitoring is a software that takes your contract or your carrier pricing, logs it and monitors every date, discount, term, condition, So if you have a discount that's expiring, a date before the rest of the contract, for example, it's going to let you know. It's going to look at your performance tiers or your earned discount tiers, portfolio tiers, whichever lingo might be on your agreement. If your volume drops and you spend less, your discounts are going to go down. And we know that, you know, if discounts are going down and you're spending more to do business, that's not a good thing. If your volume goes up, your discounts could potentially go up. Uh, You know, uh, shippers move between those tiers quite often. Uh, and our customers kept asking us where they were in their tiers. What mm. happens if they fall? What happens if I climb? You know, issues arise when they want to start to diversify their business. You know, questions like would taking volume from one carrier or another hurt them? Mm. Uh, and would the move even be worth it? Monitoring really gives, you know, the answers that would otherwise you know take them hours or days to find lots of spreadsheets, all of that stuff like that. Uh, but it also gives them data validated answers, not just, you know, hoping your carrier rep gives you the the right info. Yeah. Yeah. And so important now that, you know, rates are really climbing and not necessarily that you have to pay those um, higher rates, right? This can all really help you take a look at the different parts of of what you're doing and what's in your contract to help minimize those rates going up. And I don't think a lot of people actually realize that. And we're going to talk a little bit more about that in this conversation, but also a little bit more in this mini series later on. So talk to us through some of those key challenges when it comes to contract monitoring. What have you seen with your clients? You know, what are the impacts of those challenges that you see industry wide? I would say, you know, one of the big ones is probably bottom line. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, bottom line is always important. So is top line. Uh, we are, and here's the buzzword of the last couple of years, we're in unprecedented times, right? Like everybody yeah. just wants precedented times for Christmas. <laughs> um, but the the point behind that is, is we were on a pretty steady increase, a predictable increase for e-commerce right. until COVID mm-hmm. hit. Um, and then it just skyrocketed and everybody was doing everything they could. Volumes were all over the place. Well, now that things are starting to settle down, we're heading into a normalization of you know shipping volumes. And you know, as we're returning to those pre-pandemic levels and those normal levels of business, uh, a lot of times shippers are going to find themselves with contracts that are not set up or designed for the business that they would normally be doing. Right. So they need to have a good understanding of where their volumes are, where their discounts are, all that stuff. So how is this volume drop or this normalization going to impact their budget going forward? You know, the cost for each package they ship is going to increase year over year uh, due to the fact of you know general rate increases. Uh, but because their volume tiers are going to be lower, their discounts could be lower. Now they're seeing a significant increase because just because from the, the, the business normalizing again. Mm hmm. Absolutely. I mean, and like you said, it's very hard to predict, very hard to forecast. But as long as you've got your contract really nailed down and know the um, flexibility of it and what that means to your business, depending on what happens, I mean, that puts you above the rest. Like that's your competitive edge, right? That's right. That's absolutely right. You can't you you can't control what you can't see and what you can't measure. And so being able to measure it and see exactly what's in front of you is going to give you that power. Yeah. So let's talk about the contract monitoring functionalities. Like within the Sifted Carrier Management Suite, help like do they help to tackle those specific challenges that you were talking about? I mean, you started off talking about some of the questions that your your customers have had and how you're answering those questions with this. And then we talked a little bit more about those challenges. So specifically, what does this do? This suite Um, do to combat those specific challenges that you just mentioned? Sure. Uh, You know, one of the first questions that I will ask clients when I start working with them is, do they have a copy of their pricing agreement? And oftentimes (laughs) it's a scramble, you know, looking around for it. It's like, yeah, I think I've got one. And when you think about it, this is something that 
you know, they might have signed years ago. A lot of these mm-hmm. agreements are, you know, multi-year agreements, 36, you know, months, something like that. And then inside of that, they're going to have terms for every single uh, discount or incentive that's inside of there. They might be 36 months. They might have been 12 months. They might be adjusted. So how is this going to help you out? Nobody wants to set calendar invites for 720 days out in the future to remember to, you know, extend a surcharge, right? So, you know, we're going to bring that in. We're going to log all that information. We're going to put it in the platform. We're going to set notifications so you know exactly when those dates are coming up. And it's going to notify you in advance. So you have time to address this and you don't have something that's going to, you know, dramatically impact uh, impact your business all of a sudden fall off. Uh, and you don't realize it until you're reconciling, you know, your uh your bottom line at the end of the, the year and you suddenly discovered you're in the red and you're paying more, you know, tier changes, you know, they're 52 week rolling average. Um, but it's going to take into consideration that seasonality as well. Do you do most of your shipping around the holidays and then you, you know, follow that average as it decreases throughout the year. Uh, this is going to track that to make sure that you're staying well within the, the discounts and the tiers that you expect to, you know, again, if volumes go up, the average cost uh, of shipping is going to increase. They might see, you know, total shipping costs increase with uh, with less volumes as well. So uh, mm-hmm. it's going to give you all of that right at your fingertips. Amazing. So talk to us about the different notifications that you can actually get, because I mean, you talked about how typically most people have a contract that they have to go and find in paper format. And so they're not going to get notifications if it's in paper format somewhere filed away. And like you said, those calendar invites 720 days. I mean, they may or may not be with the company at that point. So what are the notifications that they can actually get notified on? And I think they can also model spend. Can you talk us through what that actually means and how that's helping? Sure. Yeah. So one of the first is going to be, uh, you know, decreasing or increasing volume. we're going to load all the different tiers inside of your pricing agreement. Oftentimes there's five, six, seven different tiers inside of there. And you're designed to fall with inside of one of them. Uh, as business increases or decreases, you're going to start to fluctuate, you know, towards one of the, the parameters. Uh, if you're increasing, you might get a, you know, a bigger discount, but it's oftentimes maybe a half percent, maybe 1%, not a real big incentive. So that alert's going to say, Hey, your business is growing. Uh, it might be time to reevaluate your agreement and make sure that it still fits the business that you're doing. On the flip side, if you're decreasing, the negative incentives for falling out of a tier are oftentimes mm. significantly higher. We're talking five, six, seven percent right. many times. So you get one for going up, seven for going down. Um, that's going to be pretty impactful. You're going to notice mm. that. So if you're trending towards that way, we're going to have alerts. They're going to be on the platform. They're going to come to your email box. Uh, we're going to let you know, hey. We want you to be aware that business is trending down. Is it because of, you know, just the light seasonality or are you overall trending in that direction? And we need to look at right sizing that agreement. Um, The next is going to be, you know, your surcharges or accessorials. These play a massive part in in shippers expenses. Sometimes more than 25% of your spend is going towards these surcharges and accessorials. So we're going to have the dates that they are set to expire. They're going to alert you um, in advance so that you have plenty of time to reach out to your rep and have that discussion and say, hey, this this is going to impact my business by X amount of dollars. I want to make sure that we get this extended. And that's really important because oftentimes when you're negotiating a pricing agreement, uh, reps will use uh, promotional rates or teaser incentives that are set right. for maybe 12 months, and then they rapidly decrease over time. Mm-hmm. And Again, as those are decreasing, their general rate increase is going up. So it's almost a compounding impact. And so you absolutely have to keep in front of those. Absolutely. So, you know, there's sort of an impact everywhere that you look from being able to get those notifications. And I think what that does is really change the mindset to a proactive approach from a reactive approach. Can you talk us through exactly what that impact of the, the mindset shift, right? From proactive, from reactive to proactive, what has that really done for your clients? What are you hearing from them actually say to you, you know, like this is affecting my day to day. What, what is, what is it that you're hearing? Uh, I've never done this before. Uh, that's what they're saying. <laughs> I've never thought about it this way. 
Yeah. Um, I'm, I'll give you an example of, you know, how clients might use this and be a little bit more proactive. So we're seeing uh, peak season surcharges being applied. Yes. And it's as a percentage mm -hmm. of your volume that you've shipped maybe in the month of June. So oh. a proactive approach might be, let's look at running some additional promotional business in the month of June and bolster our, you know, measurable uh, volume that we're doing at that point in time that gives us a bigger buffer when we come into our peak season. And then also, let's look at what we can diversify. Uh, I think everyone has experienced a little bit of uh, a shakeup when, you know, the carriers started putting caps and said, hey, we can't handle any more business. This is as many packages as we can take. Yeah. Uh, that's not very good for business, right? We all want to get more stuff out the door. We want to sell more product. And when you have those orders coming in and they're like, sorry, we can't, we can't take them. Uh, that's a problem. So hmm. being able to see and forecast how much volume you're going to have during that time, have those transparent conversations with your, your carrier. And if they can't handle that capacity, now you know that you need to you know, diversify this much volume come this period of time and have that plan in place. So it's taking that proactive step, getting ahead of it. I think we've all been to, you know, like a Target or a Walmart and like, I think it was like right after Labor Day, they like start putting out Christmas stuff. And you're like, when did Christmas like creep into summertime? Right. <laughs> Q4 and holiday shipping is the same way, right? You're prepping for this in Q2. Even in early Q3, you're prepping and starting to position product and everything to make sure that you understand that you have the capacity and the carrier's uh, bandwidth in order to get your product to your clients. Well, and you're not testing in peak. No, right? absolutely not. <laughs> You're not testing your carrier in peak times to see if they can actually uh, handle the volume if you're doing no, it in you, June. <laughs> nobody, nobody likes surprises, right? Uh, yeah. and, and I think the carriers have kind of made that very clear by saying, you know, hey, you on average do this much. We're going to give you plus 20% maybe, you know, mm. to, to go over that. But we have to allocate capital resources in order to move all of this product. So you've really got to know how much you're coming you know, forward with, or it's really going to cost you if they are going to move it. Well, and the other thing too, is if they can't handle it in June, what makes you think that they can handle it in peak when everybody's volume's going up? That's right. That's so exactly it gives, right. It gives you some good indication, right? And like you said, of when to diversify, because that's also a question is, you know, when do we diversify? What does that look like? Um, it's also about, you know, which carriers are the best in different regions, right? There's all sorts of things to think about and keep on top of. And, you know, if you've got tools in place like this to take care of one aspect of that or a couple of different aspects of that, or maybe all of the aspects, you can get back to doing what you need to do on a day to day basis. Now, we talk about the benefits and you just mentioned the benefits of, you know, uh, the benefits to your customers. And then we've also talked about benefits to the customer and the carrier relationship. What are some of the wider benefits to the industry as a whole when we adopt tools like these and we empower shippers with this data to be able to have these conversations? Sure. So I want to talk about shippers first, because, you know, at, at the very first, you know, you're going to see some top line benefits, right? right. Shippers are going to have better transparency into their pricing performance. Mm -hmm. That's going to allow them to do things like accurately quote shipping to their clients or even build this into the price of the product. Mm. This is going to eliminate that sticker shock or card abandonment and hopefully increase sales, right? Uh, I think we've all you know been online and ordered things and then we get there to check out and it's like, here, add another $20 for shipping and you're like, eh, I'll start <laughs> looking somewhere else, right? Nobody yeah. likes those surprises. Mm -hmm. uh, so the bottom line to the client, you're going to see increased profitability because you know that you're expected and agreed pricing is effective and it's accurately being you know applied to your account. And yeah. you also accurately understand your total landed cost. How much does it cost me to get my goods to my client so that I know that my pricing is right and that we're not high fiving and you know, fist bumping at the end of the year that we had record sales and we're in the red. <laughs> you know, some of the the wider you know effects to the industry. Uh, you know, we'll be streamlining the antiquated or even non-existent processes that we've kind of mm -hmm. you know touched on, eliminating some excess waste. So excess spend, you know, if you lost one of those surcharges or you're in the wrong tier, you're just you know kind of throwing mm -hmm. money down the down the drain. Uh, but empowering shippers to do more. And I think now more than ever, we're all trying to do more with less. 
Yeah, and I think it also um, helps the carriers, which in turn helps the shippers to be able to get their products delivered. Because at the end of the day, they have to manage these routes. They have to have the labor on these routes. That's right. And the more data that they can actually get or accurate data, right, and forecasting, et cetera, et cetera, that they can get from their customers, the better off the environment is, the better off the shippers are, the better off the consumers are, the customer experience. I think it really touches almost every aspect of, um, you know, the wider benefits to the industry. That's right. Nobody wants to see, you know, the, the two guys that were scheduled at an end of the line, you know, uh, facility, mm-hmm. all of a sudden, like, you know, five fifty three footers full of packages show up and they're like, how are we supposed to move all of these things? <laughs> Yeah, 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 absolutely. So we're going to explore other areas of the carrier management suite as we continue with the series. But can you give us a taste of how the different solutions work together to create that holistic bigger picture and then ultimately set your clients up for success? Sure. Uh, This is the, the first true cradle to grave technology solution for parcel expense management, if you will, Uh, you know, starting with negotiating and implementation of customized and tailored pricing, then you're moving into ongoing compliance and auditing, ensuring that those agreed terms and conditions are continually being applied correctly, which then feeds into the, you know, ongoing performance monitoring, which we've been talking about automating the maintenance of your agreement while providing insight into strategic moves shippers can make to, you know, and and avoid any sort of disruption, you know, and all of this is happening automatically. So shippers can quickly at a glance, see that their business is tracking as expected and ultimately focus on what they do best, which is run their business. Yeah, absolutely. We've said that a couple of times because, you know, businesses get into the weeds sometimes and it takes up time takes up time, it takes up money. And so you may as well have the right partners to help you do that. So who is really going to benefit from using Sifted's contract monitoring solution? Is it a shipper of a certain size or with a certain dollar amount attached to those contracts? What does that look like? I don't think anybody's too large or too small to benefit from this. You know, if you have a carrier contract with agreed pricing customized to your business, then monitoring is going to be valuable. Uh, you know, if you have discounts that expire, different tiers, you know, anything that you're going to typically see inside of a, you know, a carrier pricing agreement, it's going to be a perfect fit for you, you know, mm-hmm. regardless of the size. And again, you know, I'm going to say it again. It's the buzzword of the day. All of us now more than ever, you know, we're still trying to do more with less. And, you know, this is one of those hats or things that you can take off of your plate and not worry about it because you know that it's it's automated it's there you know where everything's at you're not searching for your agreement or trying to remember if something's expiring mhm Absolutely. And I love to hear that, right? Because a lot of times the small to mid-sized businesses can't necessarily use tools like this because it's either, you know, a, a larger investment than maybe they can uh, provide. But this is really something that would help the small to medium sized businesses. So I'm glad that you said that there's nobody too small or too big to use this solution because that is going to make a huge impact on this industry for, you know, all sorts of businesses of different sizes that can really get their hands on this. So obviously the carrier management suite is a new product, which we just said, but do you have any examples or case studies you can share around how this works for a customer and the impact or ROI of using the solution? You've been really great, Jeremy, of sharing other examples, um, but I'm hoping that you have some more that uh, we can share with the audience. I probably have more examples than people want to listen to, but uh, probably one of my my favorites uh, here is it, it, it's a sports equipment company. Uh, mm-hmm. But more than that, they have a lot of different brands uh, underneath their portfolio, uh, but they all work together underneath you know a single pricing agreement. They are diversified, so they're using multiple carriers. Uh, and they have really good uh, you know routing rules that they have sent out across all of their brands. However, routing rules have to be followed. Uh, And what we found uh, with this client was, you know, a couple of their brands were using one of the non-preferred carriers for a few lines of their product. And they were saving, you know, a couple dollars per shipment to Mm. ship this line. But collectively, what that was doing was pulling down their overall gross transportation spend, and it was negatively impacting 
the the organization as a whole and it was costing them tens of thousands of dollars a week because these this line of product was going out under the wrong uh, shipping rules and so they weren't hitting the the discounts they needed to and all of their their brands were suffering as a result of it uh, our tool was able to catch that it was able to see that very quickly it was able to identify exactly what was happening uh, and allow them to make that 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 fix and then of course you can have the broader discussion of okay do we want to make some adjustments here to to satisfy the, this couple dollar per shipment or do we just need to make sure that we're forcing the rowdy rules that we have out there so that's just one of many examples uh that you know the management suite is able to address and able to address automatically so that you can keep from having uh you know a major problem run for a long time i always say mm-hmm. let's let's keep a, a small problem small one degree at one foot versus one degree at one mile I love that saying, and I'm glad that you used that in the example. I mean, think about it. If that had gone on for months, you know, tens of thousands of dollars every single week, the impact on the company, right? Whereas using a tool like this, you can actually nip that in the bud way faster and save all that money and save even more from being able to um, change a few things on your contract. That's right. So finally, then, what would you like to leave the audience with? It could be a summary of the solution, maybe some words of advice, but what's your key takeaway that you'd like the audience to walk away from this episode, you know, thinking about or maybe taking uh, action on? Uh, if, if any of the, the things that we've said have resonated, if you're currently scrambling to, to find where your current pricing agreement's at um, or just want to better understand some of the things that we started to talk about, you know, reach out. Let's let's discuss. Let's see if there's a there's a good fit. Let's see if we can make your life a little bit easier and take a couple of those things off your plate, especially as you're going into the holiday season and starting to plan for you know 2023. Absolutely. And I would highly recommend that you do. And then my word of advice is to listen to the rest of this mini series to get even more of an understanding of what this can do for you and your business. So what a great start to our mini series. I mean, cost is front of mind for absolutely everyone right now with inflation and soaring costs for things like labor and fuel. And the last thing businesses need is for their contract tiers to sneak up on them as well you know, hitting them with surprise volume-based pricing penalties. So Sifted Contract Monitoring puts a stop to these unwanted surprises and keeps you from exceeding or falling out of your negotiated tiers an absolute must-have for businesses looking to drive success. If you want to find out more, you can check them out at sifted.com. A massive thanks to Jeremy for joining me today and to the team at Sifted for making this episode happen. And we'll be back next week for episode two of our Driving Your Parcel Performance mini-series. I'll be joined once again by the fabulous Caleb Nelson, Chief Growth Officer at Sifted, to talk all about contract performance, how we measure and score performance, why it's important, and why we should all be expecting our contracts to work just as effectively for us as any other business area. Plus, Jeremy gave us some secrets today. Caleb gives us a bunch of secrets in the next episode as well. It's a really important topic as we all reflect on the impact of the general rate increase, so make sure that you don't miss it. Thanks for joining me today, Jeremy. Thanks, Sarah. 